I know it's quite late, you had a long day, and I'm trying to make it fast and interesting for you. So let's start. My name is Dora Mit. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Tenroot Cybersecurity. And today I'm going to talk with you about a research that we conducted on RTLS system based on Bluetooth. And we try to explore the possibilities and capabilities of proximity-based location systems uh, for both offensive and, de and defensive cyber use cases. So from this research, we also had a, a tool that we build, a mobile app that we call Bluehawk, which is uh, supposed to be an easy to use uh, mobile app that we can use for uh, detecting, detection of uh, RSSI signals and proximity-based location. And it's actually add to any mobile phone, Android-based mobile phone, a virtual proximity sensor. So what is RTLS, or a real-time location system? This is actually a set of technologies and protocols that aims to detect either the identity or the location of a device. And when I'm talking about location, it's not the exact location. It could also be the distance, because it really depends on the protocol and technology in use. So for example, as you can see from the compersion table that we have here, we have several set of different protocol and technologies that can be used in RTLS systems. So for example, the most common one which we explored was RSSI, but we also have AOA, for example, Engel of Arrival, which is much more accurate. But if you can see from the compersion table here, we have a trade-off. So when we have a more robust technology that is more accurate to the submitter, it's also more complex and more intensive. So for example, the AOA, as you can see, need at least Bluetooth 5.1 in order to work, an array of antennas, okay, to be really accurate, and then we can detect the different signals from each antenna and then calculate the exact location. So RSSI by its own, only good for distance, it's not the exact location. We have more advanced technologies that have not only work with Bluetooth, but in Wi-Fi and other RF as well. So what is RSSI? Then, RSSI stands for Receiver Signal Strength Indicator. And it's actually the signal strength that we are receive from uh, Bluetooth devices. Again, we can also use RSSI with Wi-Fi and other RF technologies, okay? And it's differ from RX, okay, with measurement because it's a relative measurement. It can be infected from uh, different environmental factors and the vendor, okay? Different vendor may have different RSSI standards and measurements. But again, we have a relationship between the RSSI and the actual distance. And the, actually a formula that we show here on the slide that you can look that convert pretty good in a clean environment the RSSI value into distance. We can also get more acu accurate location if you use several different uh, receivers or transmitters. So if we use a technique called trilateration, trilateration, that it's very similar to triangulation, which uh, conclude multiple receivers, okay, from one transmitter, over one transmitter, we can get more accurate location and not just the distance, okay? So if I summarize the adventures of Bluetooth, RTLS, RSSI best, over other technologies, protocols, okay, it's the simplicity and ease of use, okay? It's the number of uh, transmitters that are supported, okay? So for example, I can use very inexpensive Bluetooth chips, any uh, modern mobile phone, laptops, computer, peripheral equipment, earbuds, speakers, television, everything that actually support Bluetooth with version 4.0 and up is supported as a transmitter. And for the receivers, I don't need any special equipment or special prerequisites. I don't need an antenna array or a special expensive equipment. I can just use a normal or even legacy old mobile phone. I'm sure every and each one of you have a legacy old phone that lie in the drawer and just wait for being used, right? And not being thrown away. And if I have to check the advantages over Wi-Fi, okay? So this technology is much cheaper, is more accurate, it's low power and consumption, so a lot of advantages over Wi-Fi as well. Let's talk about the use cases. And when we explore RSSI capabilities, we discover a few several things that are uh, technical capabilities that support multiple use cases. I will talk about the uh, cybersecurity related use cases, but you can assume that there are many more 
uh, beneficial use cases for everyday use. And some of them we're going to live demonstrate over here in the conference. So before I will show you the, and go into those use cases, think about RSSI as a thing that I can discover new devices and discover the disappearing of those devices if they go out of range. But not only that, I can detect also the trend if those devices are coming to me or going away. So it's also give me the proximity, the distance, okay? And this changing in distance can give me very interesting use cases that I'm gonna talk about them right away, okay? So let's continue. So asset tracking and protection, I think it's the most common use case that each and every one of you must know. I'm sure you're familiar with AirTag by Apple. And there is, I think, new feature in uh, Android as well that was just introduced by Google uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, in order to use this use case, we can use inexpensive Bluetooth chip, put them on the asset that you want to track, and then we can govern whether it's very expensive uh, server or other equipment, personal equipment, or anything else. So I think this is very self-explanatory use case, and um, I'm sure there is a lot of private use case you can think of and maybe use it for, even not for cybersecurity, but for your own personal asset tracking back at home, okay? The next use case is much more interesting, and this is physical access control, okay? Think about the restricted area, okay, in your company, in a factory, whatever, like a, maybe a restricted room, like the data center, the entrance for the data center, which I can govern, okay, just with a Bluetooth-enabled machine that uh, transmit, emit, RSS, with, that I can uh, uh, digest the RSSI signal, and then I can um, know who is going into the room how far it is from the room and whether I should approve him or not, okay? Now this can work both ways, both whitelist approach and a blacklist approach. If I'm taking the whitelist approach, I'm saying every device that I'm detecting is approved, okay? And if I'm not detecting it, I should raise an alert or maybe forbid access if I have other detection or other sensors inside this restricted area like cameras with motion detection, for example. With a blacklist approach, I want to do the opposite. I want maybe to give the attendee or the visitor a Bluetooth tag, okay, and monitor this tag. And this tag maybe come, maybe I can use it for uh, areas that is a legit access. And for the forbidden access areas, this tag gonna emit a signal with the MAC address that will raise an alert. Okay, so this is for the physical access control. And feel, please feel free to ask questions if you want. We can make this uh, session interactive. Another uh, interesting use case is enhanced authentication, okay? All of you, I guess, familiar with MFA, right? Multi-factor authentication. What if I telling you that proximity-based location can use also as an authentication factor, okay? Think about the following use case, okay? You need to do a privilege action or an action that poses a high risk, okay? Like logging into a, a server in a data center and you want part of this privilege action with high, that pose the t this high risk, okay, get another additional factor that is based on proximity, on physical proximity. So if I'm doing the login from within the server room, okay, then I'm approved and I can do this privilege activity that I wanted to do. But if I'm doing it from, from, from the outside, then I'm restricted and I can't do the login. Okay, so this conditional access mechanism that is very common in zero trust methodology is something that I can get announced with using a RSSI and using proximity-based, okay? Proximity-based location. Um, if we take that one step further for contextual authorization, this is also one of the principal in the zero trust methodology. And what it's basically said that instead of just giving you access or not, or, or uh, if translated uh, to more technical means, allow or forbid authentication process, I can allow authentication, but give it with a restrict access, okay? Instead of a full privilege mode, okay? So let's say that I wanna do some risky activity. And again, I'm coming back to this example with going and logging into this data center, to the server room, okay? And now, uh, when I'm uh, logging in from within the server room and being identified, okay, that I'm approximate in this room, I can do whatever I want. I get in this privilege access, okay? But if I'm doing it outside of the room and I'm not detected, I didn't use this additional factor, 
I can still get in, I can still log in, but I get a restricted access versus privileged one, okay? So what it's mean that I may be able to just read data but not modify or delete it, okay? Or maybe restrict with what I can do. So I restrict my authorization, not just the ability to authenticate or not, okay? And this is very important principle in Zero Trust. Uh, I guess you're all familiar with the impossible travel use case with the impossible travel scenario, which you try to uh, log in from different uh, places in the world. Uh, and then this is uh, sometimes can indicate of an attacker activity. So this way I can validate the actual location, okay? This, uh, all the use cases we discussed so far are defensive use cases, but let's talk a little bit about offensive use cases, okay? So of course there is physical recon. I think that it's very easy using this technology to map physically an entire room that you haven't been at, okay? All the devices, the peripherals that emit Bluetooth, okay? I can uh, map them, understand trends, because it's not only the presence of those devices. I can understand not only their relative location or distance, but whether they come in close to me or away from me, and this allow me to understand behavioral pattern and trends, okay? Think about a room that is full of people, like an open space, and in a certain time every day, all the people go to a daily meeting or to lunch. So in one point during the day, I detect that all the devices are getting far away until they're unreachable anymore, okay? So this is something that gives me behavioral pattern, and this is really important when conducting cybersecurity attack. Another thing is authorized device spoofing, okay? Think about all the use cases we talked about from defensive perspective, okay? And they're all based about the identity of the receiver or the transmitter, right? The transmitter send eventually not only the RSSI, but also his MAC address, which allow me to identify it uniquely. But this is something that is really, really easy to spoof, right? It's really easy to spoof MAC address. So I need to rely on other environmental characteristics in order to uniquely identify a device and not relate only on his MAC address. So uh, device spoofing, again, it's a very common use case for offensive uh, scenario. There is a real-time movement tracking to avoid detection. Let's say that I'm conducting a red team in our organization. And I know there's some security guards that have these patrols over the organization. And I need to verify where they are located, where they are in a certain time. If they carry any Bluetooth device that is activated, that is enabled, it allows me to detect this device, understand where approximately they are. And if there are some devices, okay, it's allowed me to be even more accurate and maybe sample them from a different perspective and know the accurate location and not just their distance and avoid this detection, okay? I can use it also to exfiltrate data using RSSI. So this is something that is really interesting scenario. Think if I can control on the transmission level of this RSSI or just enable and disable it and I can convert eventually the signal to zero and one, I can encode any type of data that I want. So this is something that is really hard to detect unless I have special sensors that can detect changes in RSSI value, okay? Usually it's not something that you deploy in your organization because it's, it's a command and control vector that you are not usually think about when exfiltrating data out, right? But everything that eventually can be zero and one, signal or no signal, or difference that it's easy to detect in the length of, of the signal, it's something that allow me to encode data and decode it back and this way exfiltrate information out. So this is very useful for air-gapped environment, for example, okay? Or for sensitive organizations that are disconnected from the internet. And there is also proximity-based proximity services like manual deployment, which can be deployed during uh, proximity of uh, certain people or the lack of proximity. I can use it for a phishing campaign. There was a lot of uh, saying here about phishing campaign. So this is something that I can use to deploy phishing campaign that are not necessarily done by email, but for uh, broadcast uh, SMS or texting or other form of broadcasting information. Okay, what you can see down on the screen is a app that we developed for Windows operating system, which has the same principle. So you can see also the RSSI value, the MAC address of the different devices. 
And this is something that, like the mobile app that we're going to show you soon, can also be used as a malware for offensive use cases. So let's talk a little bit about the Bluehawk mobile app and its uh, feature, because actually there are a lot of apps that can show you the RSSI and create automation. But we actually aimed for something that's going to be really, really easy to use, accessible to anyone, and allow all of you to explore the different capabilities for both offensive and defensive use cases. So it works on any, almost any mobile phone, even legacy one that support Bluetooth 4.0 and up. So this is something that allows you to utilize existing hardware and doesn't need you to, uh, to purchase special equipment or anything else or a new phone. Uh, it has a built-in Bluetooth device monitor and RSSI receiver. So I can see all the devices in the room, and we're going to show it live in just a few seconds. And uh, there are RSSI values. And we also have the, the formula, the converter formula, that I can convert these RSSI values into distance in meters. So it's really easy to me to see in a clean environment how far the different devices are away from me. It also have a rule-based engine with RSSI proximity-based conditions. So I, it's not only I can activate a condition based upon the presence of a device, if it's appear or not, if it's detectable or not, but how close is it to me? So I can uh, uh, create rules based on trend, whether a device is coming close or getting away, and set up either the RSSI value or the distance. So I can say if a device come two meters from me, then activate the rule. And what is the action supported by the rule-based engine, you must ask yourself. So the device sensor, when we use the mobile phone, any mobile phone have tons of different sensors. So the action can be sending an alert in email, a notification in the, in the device, in the, mail, in, the, in the cell phone itself, but can also utilizing the different sensor, okay? Like the camera, the front camera, the rear camera, recording sound, and this is part of the demo that we're going to see soon. So let's talk about the demo. What we're going to do is a device discovery. And I'm going to show you like all the different devices that are present in the room at the moment. We're going to add and save a new device that we're going to apply the new rule on. We're going to configure a device discovery rule. So the condition that we're going to set up is upon the discovery of a new device. Then we're going to fire up this uh, supposed action. And then the action that we're going to choose is recording a video, OK, from the camera. And this is, could be used as a surveillance camera where a motion detector camera can't work or um, it's not very effective, OK? So let's see the demo in action. But before the demo, I want to give some credits to the research team that was participate with me in this research. So thanks for David Wolfson, Alon Kerkelis, Yaniv Rodinsky, and Nof Levy. They're not here. but. They contributed a lot for this research. Yes, they deserve it. Thank you. And let's continue. And now we see a short video with a demo, and then I'm going to present it live to you. So what we're going to do, what, we're going, what we are seeing now, it's the actual app in action. So we're going to scan the different devices in the room. Soon, we're going to uh, see a device, which is my JBL speaker at the house. And I'm going to add this JBL speaker and save it so, gonna, so I can apply a rule directly on him. I can do it for any new discovered device or on all devices altogether. So I'm going to name this device. I have its unique MAC address. Yes, this is mine. My name should be on the rule's name. And now let's add a new rule, OK? I can define a very complex rule with n or conditions. So I can apply several different conditions in order to fire up the rule. And here, let's choose the uh, actions that are relevant. Action, here you can see that I have another device, which is my personal Pixel Pro, my cell phone. The action that we're going to choose is a notification inside the mobile device, an email, and a rare camera recording. We set the rule for discovery. So upon discovering this JBL speaker, the rule is going to fire up. And what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to turn the speaker off so you won't see it in the list at the moment. It's just to simulate a regular situation where the, de where the device that you want to find is not exist, is not present. So you can see it's gone from the screen. 
Now I'm gonna turn the rule based engine on and turn on the speaker again. You can't hear the sound, but trust me, I turned it on. And uh, we configure this rule to work automatically every 30 seconds. So there is gonna be a search conducted automatically every 30 seconds. And once the speaker is gonna be discovered, the action gonna take place, the camera gonna start recording a video. I can set up for how many seconds I want this recording to take place. And we're shortly gonna see um, the result. Are you curious if it's gonna work? I'm really curious. Okay, so here it is, and we see on the right up corner a new alert. What can it be? Maybe someone stole my speaker. Okay, that's the demo, guys. And we can also, thank you, thank you. And we can also see an alert that also give me the geolocation. So every alert I'm getting is also give me, again, the geolocation. And uh, I think now it's time to see a live demo, right? Okay, it's been a long day. Let's see some live demo. And for the demo, I want to invite my, my business partner, my brother, the yeah. one and only Yossi Sassi. Hello, hello. My brother from a different mother. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be by far, I think, uh, the most uh, easy demo I've ever done on stage in the last 30 something years. Um, Essentially, I'm just uh, here on the role of the lovely assistant, right? In the Wheel of Fortune of uh, Bluetooth uh, RSSI. <laughs> okay, so before we start the demo, I show you a little bit of application. We're going to publish it to, into the uh, market. We're going to have a cross version as well for iOS, for, uh, um, for Apple. Uh, for now, it's just for Android. So um, basically, you can see that we found 65 different devices. It's going to just uh, raise up and up. Should I turn one, mine uh, on? No, no, no. Oh, Wait for okay. a second. I just want to go on the interface, show these guys yeah. the oh, innovation, tickets. all the research <laughs> that we conducted. And you can see how I can uh, convert these RSSI values into distance and know which device is exist and how far it's away from me in meters. If I go over here to the settings, you can see the rule scan, the device scan, alert history, and other boring information that you might want to use. And I have also the uh, geolocation. This is like the closest geolocation I could find outside of this building, which is Dizing of 9th Street. Okay? So this is going to be sent in the alert. Now, I already defined a device, which is the device that Yossi holds in his hand. It's my old Galaxy S20 FE. And once I'm going to uh, activate the rule-based engine, I'm going to, but once Yossi is going to uh, start up the Bluetooth, I'm going to detect this device and start the rare camera, and you're going to have a video of all of you, okay? If the demo is going to work, and I hope it's going to work. Um, so Yossi, you can start uh, the Bluetooth, and let's see what happened. All right. I'm getting pairing requests from the audience, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if the, if the device... Oh, here it is. Yeah. Door Galaxy. Let's see. I think it was detected. Uh -huh. Let's see if I got a new... Uh, oh, let's see what we got here. We got a video recording Can you of focus the Galaxy. On the, yeah. Let's go here. Yeah. This one or uh, the previous one? It's, a, it's an old alert. An old alert, yeah. And I also should supposed to get an email. Let's see if I got an alert on the mail. No, no, got yet. Okay, let's try this again. Demo, yes. Live demo sometimes not work, Woo! guys. Of course. Let's give it another try. <laughs> okay, I'm going to activate this again. Uh huh. Okay. And I'm going to activate this again. <laughs> Turn on the Bluetooth, or it's turned on. Yes, it Kay. is. Let's see. Looking good. Looking good. I feel something good from this bluish thing coming. Okay, we have a 15-second interval of scanning. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we detect it in the next round. Okay, device detected. I got a new alert. Uh huh. Yeah, there we go. I think that's the new one, right? Yeah. Let's open this alert. No, this is the old one. Let's the go second to this one. Yeah. one. This one, yeah. And, and we got an error. <laughs> okay. One more time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Not working. Let's <laughs> see if at least I got an email alert. Okay, yeah. the email alert did received. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we have some bugs with the video, but uh, I maybe take it offline and show you this uh, next time. <laughs> it's still a free APK, right? Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. Give it up to Dor and the guys at Tenro. Thanks so thank much. Thank you, Yossi, the one and only.